That's right, not MBR. This time it's the TBR. Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, I am going to be talking about my TBR uh, for the month of October, which isn't a huge TBR. And yes, there will still be some, you know, MBR type things and, and mood read stuff potentially in there. Uh, but I actually ended up having more specific planned books than I than I intended, uh, and uh, because I, I ended up throwing some extra stuff in. But uh, if you if you remember from when I did a video talking about what the next three months were going to be, uh, for August I focused on review copies and arcs. September was stuff that I had, had needed to get to for a really long time, and then October specifically is stuff that's out of my comfort zone. I thought that seemed like a fun theme because I don't really do a lot of horror, so naturally, like you could probably say that would fit but I wanted to do um, things that I you know I may like but I have other people suggest them so I did reach out and I had four uh, different booktubers uh, suggest a book people who uh, are, are familiar enough with my taste that I, I trust the recommendations but also that read a lot of stuff that I don't uh, and so let's talk about them which uh, <laughs> most of them so I, I uh, a couple of them were are very difficult to track down physical copies of uh, and then uh, a couple of them I think my library has, but I have not yet gotten them. So we're just going to we're gonna look digitally, but these might all end up being digital. But first, we have Chess Story by Stefan Zweig, which uh, this it was suggested by uh, Murphy Napier, who took the assignment very seriously uh, with picking something out of my comfort zone. I know I've heard her talk about this author. He's supposed to be uh, really, really good. Uh, and this is, is, I guess, one of the last things that he did uh, that he wrote. Uh, and it's... It, it does involve chess and specifically a chess player that's like on a ship, but also supposed to uh, be looking at Nazism and uh, uh, having some like commentary around that and all the introspection. So I'm really curious. I, I remember hearing her talk about another one of this author's books as well. And uh, it's pretty short, uh, but it sounds like it'll be a, a pretty interesting time. So that's the, the first thing that we have on there as well. Next up, you have I'm Not a Serial Killer by Dan Wells. So this is probably the only thing on the list that I was like specifically aware of. And there's just maybe a chance I would have tried it at some point uh, just because, you know, I, I've heard a Dan Wells uh, just from his association with Sanderson. But it's not something I was probably going to get to uh, or, <laughs> you know, being realistic within years. Uh, so it's still to work. This was suggested by Jake, uh, the bookish drummer, who thankfully did not make me uh, read a Stephen King book because I was concerned he was going to pick a Stephen King book. Uh, but this is supposed to be a little bit more on the YA side, but sounds like it's kind of similar to Dexter, uh, where it's a character who um, is basically like trying really hard not to be a serial killer, but then is investigating a suspicious murder potentially by another serial killer. So it sounded like Dexter vibes uh, and um, should be really different reminds me that i never did read those dexter books i like the show but never read the books but um so this will be another one that's quite different from my normal tastes uh and uh hopefully will be a good one there as well and uh next up we have the passengers by john mars which is more so of a thriller this was uh suggested by stacy the uh, chapter conundrum is her channel and uh this is a thriller that involved a self-driving car so somebody's like in it and then uh, all of a sudden they can't can yeah you know, they have no control they're locked in and it says they're gonna die and that's kind of the basis here so it feels like kind of a, like a timely uh a thriller with a, a lot of the self-driving car stuff being talked about but i i i may have read a thriller in my life but i honestly don't know and i know it's one of the most like with the general population one of the most popular types of things i know a lot of people read thrillers uh, with everything else so this will be really interesting to try uh just because it's it's not something i'm i'm you know a genre that i've really read much of anything in uh so it will be interesting and then also uh, going with uh something that's a, a little bit more obscure uh we had joanna uh and she suggested electric forest by tanith lee now i i tried looking around it's really difficult to find this particular cover which was uh, painted by don mates uh who uh, has done some fantastic art and I, I would love to get this you can get a current copy of this book but it, it doesn't look particularly cool uh and so if i get a physical copy i want to try and find this art um but this is a an older like a 70s sci-fi uh, which I've not read much of. And I do I do throw in some sci-fi, but with older sci-fis or something, I'm, I, it's, it is definitely still fits outside of my comfort zone. Uh, and the plot here basically is that there's a, um, 
there's a disabled woman who is trying to get like a new body in return for doing some espionage it sounds like uh from talking to joanna it sounds like this is the prose wise really really interesting and just uh, a lot of the things with the writing uh gonna be a really interesting time so i am a uh, super super curious to find out so those are the four that were picked out for me all very different, uh, very diverse uh, set of books. So I'm. it's going to be really interesting. Uh, just trying some really different things for October. I think it fits the, the spirit really well. I did also, one of the only things that's going to be coming that's, that's going to be a physical read, um, I did uh, add in Necroscope by Brian Lumley. So this has been recommended to me for literally years. I went back and checked literally years uh, by a viewer, James Fetcho. So I don't know if he, if he saw my, uh, I, I did this in a book haul and kind of commented on it, I was wondering. Uh, but he's been a long time viewer and has suggested this book to me several times. And I randomly came across a copy. So I figured why not? And this seemed like a good month to do it. This is, um, so it's supposed to be like a vampire book, but like more specifically, I guess it's centering around the, like the Cold War and a necroscope, somebody who can talk to the dead and not super vampire until a little bit later. Uh, but it's, it's, yeah, none of the elements in this sound like anything that's, that's within my normal reads. Uh, but it's somebody, somebody recommended it. And, uh, then after mentioning, I was going to be reading this, this turned into kind of a mini buddy read, uh, cause it sounds like Andrew from Andrew's Wizardly Reads might join. Uh, Trend Portal Magic might join as well, and uh, then uh, it sounds like Leslie, the nerdy narrative, who's actually read this and enjoyed it, might jump in for a reread. I'm not sure if that's going to be for me, but uh, I am. I'm curious to find out. It sounds like it's a uh, it's going to fit the theme really well. And then another buddy read, uh, Sailing to Sarantium by Gagner of OK, which I've commented several times that I have just about everything he's written. This and the sequel are, are maybe the only Guy Gabriel K books I don't physically own at this point. Uh, so I'll probably end up trying to get a copy, but I think right now I'll, I'll end up just doing this on Kindle um, because it's also one of the few that my library doesn't have either the audio or the ebook for, for whatever reason. So, uh, I, I'm, yeah, <laughs> a lot of, a lot of hard to, hard to get copies that I don't have access to this month, but Hey, it is what it is. So uh, this, I'm also doing a buddy read with a, a big group of people. I will note that in the description as well too. Uh, but they were, they'd been reading Guy Gabriel K and asked if I wanted to join in. I was very excited because I've just been loving Guy Gabriel K. And so um, I've heard great things about this one and we'll be excited to get to it as well. And then finally, uh, well, another thing that I have specifically on there is the first book of swords by Fred Saberhagen. And this was picked out by uh, my, one of my high tier patrons, uh, Jennifer in one of the, the perks there's you get to pick a book once a quarter for me to read and uh, she picked this one which it sounds like is another classic fantasy series that I'm not specifically familiar with uh, so I'm pretty excited because uh, I, I really enjoy checking out uh, older fantasy series uh, and this one seems like it's going to really have a lot of that feel so I also feel like this is a great balance between this and Guy Gabriel K of having some stuff that's that, that should work really well for me uh, and is much more in my comfort zone uh, to mix in with all of the other stuff that's not in my comfort zone. So I'm I'm uh, I'm pretty excited for all of this. This is gonna be a weird month full of a lot of different stuff, but a lot of uh, of really interesting stuff as well. So I'm really excited to get to it. And I will uh, uh, of course I'll end up having audio going because pretty much all of these are gonna be like Kindle or somewhat physical, depending on if I end up getting copies. I think it copies from my library, but um, it's it's mostly there, so I'll definitely still have audio going. What I'm probably going to do is is a continue uh, Second Chronicles of Thomas Covenant. Uh, I did I, I did a, a triple format for the first book, but I really did like the audio, and it's on it's included on Audible, so I might just do audio only for uh, the, the next book. I've started it actually already, and then I still have book three as well as I do need to uh, finish uh, out the Last King Von Stenard here fairly quickly. So I may end up just popping in Empire Grass and Into the Narrow Dark on audio. I did do some audio for the first one as well and enjoyed it. So I might uh, do that. Brothers of the Wind too. I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to read it. I keep saying, I don't know if I'm going to have time and I probably don't have time, but I'm still probably going to do it anyway. Uh, but yeah, once I'm, I'm through those, I, uh, I definitely want to get to the Navigator's Children before it's out because I have an e-arc. And then I also do have an e-arc for the Lotus Empire, which is the third book in the, uh, I think, I think the Burning Kingdoms, the Tasha series, series, which I've read the the first two. So uh, I'm gonna try and fit those in too. I've uh I've I've left myself with a lot to read in October. Uh, so we'll see how everything shakes out and what I'll end up getting to. Uh, but I'm uh, I'm really excited. Uh, a lot of great stuff here. So I'm I'm excited to to see how it all goes. 
Um, that's really it for this one. I will note, I'm gonna have all of the channels that I mentioned, because there's quite a lot between the theme, the buddy reads, everything uh, going on as well uh, in the description. So check out those channels if you're not familiar with any of them. Uh, all lots of great people. Uh, definitely let me know in the comments as well if you are uh, planning anything specific for October, whether it's like spooky reads. Uh, I know a lot of people do that. If you're doing anything outside of your comfort zone or uh, you know any thoughts you have on any of the stuff that I'm reading, make sure to give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Check the links in the description as always for the Patreon. If you want to chat books, whether any of these books, other books, really anything at all, it's a lot of fun and we'd love to have you. And of course, if you enjoy my content, make sure to subscribe.